Okay, we're going to start MSIs for the first time. One thing you'll notice right off the bat is it says it's station SBNY latitude zero zero. That's just the default uh, station name. So one of the first things you want to do is set up this station. Settings, this station. Station name, this is called College Hill. My latitude 44.5684. Since I'm in the west longitude, it's minus 123.285. And my elevation in meters is 79 meters. My station code is CHOR. The network is EN, that's for educational network, and it's a vertical component, so leave those alone. Say OK. Now you notice it still says SBNY up here at the top. But if I turn the program off, start it up again, now it says CHOR College Latitude Longitude. So it's saved that information about my latitude and longitude and station name. So now the next thing when you're first, in, first setting up the station is to Check that the zero level is at uh, 2048. Okay, my zero level is 2048. That just means the midway in the analog digital converter is 2048. It goes from zero to 4096 because it's a 12-bit analog digital converter. So then you want to look at settings, show data values. Oh, my data values are way off. It's minus 2048, so it's pegged in the minus direction. So to fix that, I need to turn the knob on the black box. I'm going to go all the way from one end. Okay, there's all the way at one end, plus 2047. Turning it slowly. Now I'm going right away to minus 2048. So that's not a place where I want to be because it went abruptly from plus to minus. Now I'm turning quite a ways. It's always minus 2048. Keep going. Now it's changing. I'm moving very slowly and it's changing fairly rapidly down towards zero. And now it's getting positive again. Now it's plus 2047. So I'm going to go back to this place where it more or less slowly changed from positive to negative numbers. So we're right. Okay, now we're getting close. Down to 700, 600, 500, 400, 300. Oop. 49. Okay, it's a little bit, still a little bit positive. Okay, well, and that's pretty negative. That may be about as close as I can get it. Ideally, the numbers are going to be relatively small. They're going to be bouncing between positive numbers and negative numbers. So now over here on the screen, you can see these wild excursions, and then all of a sudden down here, I'm starting to see the trace during this hour, during the 19th hour. The bottom corner, it says 1948.26. Here's the 19th hour. I follow that across. Here's about 48 and 49, so that's where the trace is right now. It's right on the correct line. The easiest way to get this on the line, again, is to ch set the data values. When they're near zero, it will be in the right location. Another thing you can set, for most situations, you're going to be looking at distant earthquakes. And so you'll want some filtering to focus the seismometer system on waves that are uh, lower, longer period than the noise, which is maybe around eight second period noise. So let's filter out the high frequencies. Turning on the filter, filter out high frequencies. Clicking on that button. There we go. So filter out high frequencies. And I'm going to filter out high frequencies. This means periods that are shorter than about 12 seconds. And I'll filter out low frequencies. I want to filter out frequencies with periods longer than 25 seconds period. So 
So now I'll say, OK. Now at the bottom, you can see I say it still says gain 20, bandpass filter 12 to 25. So that's what your period should look like, 12 to 25 for looking for distant earthquakes. Now my amplitudes are greatly reduced, so I can increase the gain. Instead of a gain of 20, I'm going to change the gain up by a factor of 10 to 200. Since I'm only looking at a narrow range of periods, I can increase the gain quite a bit and still stay reasonably on scale. This looks like a reasonable amount of background noise to me. I really want to be able to see a little bit of noise on the trace at all times so that I'm sure that there's nothing larger than the noise that I might miss. So if I can see the noise, then I know that I'll be able to see something that's higher than the noise, greater amplitude than the noise. So are there any other things we can set here? Hill a quarter. This number of days to scroll back, I guess the default is 365. Uh, it's, you don't need to worry about that number too much. Decimation factor, if you have a very, very slow computer, you might want to not try to plot all the points. There may be only a thousand points across your screen, but in an hour, there are many more samples. It's six samples per second, 60 seconds per minute, 60 minutes per hour. So if you multiply that 60 times 60 times 6, you get the number of points that it tries to plot on every hour. If your computer is slow and it has difficulty plotting all those points quickly, then you could decimate by a factor of two or three and it'll, the waves will look about the same anyway. Uh, filters turned on. There's this option here, glitch removal. Uh, you probably won't need that, but there are, are situations where for some reason, probably an electronic reason or a, a, a interface between the black box and the computer reason, uh, certain points every occasionally will be dropped. And, and a bad points turn out to be very big uh, neg negative numbers on the screen. If you start getting a lot of dropouts like that, single points that are bad, you turn on this glitch filter and it'll automatically remove them. Uh, one thing that you notice I've done, I've painted with uh, whiteout, an arrow on here. In some cases, on some black boxes, the numbers get larger when you turn the knob clockwise. In some cases, the numbers get larger on the screen, the trace goes higher when you turn the knob counterclockwise. So this is a counterclockwise box here. Positive numbers are counterclockwise. It's a good idea to cover up this knob once you get things set. It's not that easy to set the zero level. And if you cover that up, it'll be less tempting for anybody to come and just turn the knob to see what it does. Because once they turn the knob, you've got to go through this process again and figuring out uh, where the best uh, location is for that.